Hey guys, what's going on? Just wanted to uh, react to a very um, interesting video of Brian Lilly, who was just essentially reacting and analyzing uh, Pierre Polyev's new ad that he came out with. And I believe he dropped it last night during the uh, Oilers Panthers game. So let's have a look at this here and then uh, we'll talk about it after, like usual. It's time for a change in this country, my friends. A real change. Effective ad from Pierre Polyev and the Conservative Party attacking Justin Trudeau's record since coming to office. It was released in the middle of Game 3 of the Stanley Cup Final Playoffs. It was designed to change the channel from just talking about the carbon tax to talking about the record of Justin Trudeau. And when you watch the entire thing, it's quite devastating. It's time for a change in this country, my friends. A real change! You see where he's going with this, right? Now, liberals can push back and say, well, homelessness isn't a federal issue, except they've made it one. They can say, well, it's a housing issue, and that's municipal or provincial. Sure. But what this ad tries to show is say, look, things used to be different, and since Justin Trudeau came to power, they've gotten worse. And it it, it doesn't tell you they've gotten worse, it shows you they've gotten worse in ways that anyone that lives in any major center can understand because we've all seen these tent encampments. Look, why would they be spending money so far out of an election campaign period? Because one of the things that you have to do in politics is define your opposition. You have to define yourself or be defined and you have to define your opposition. The biggest mistake the Liberals ever made was not defining Pierre Polyev, not having attack ads ready to go on September 12th, 2022. They allowed Pierre Polyev to introduce himself to the Canadian public and many people like what they heard. The Liberals have been going down in the polls for the last year, the Conservatives have been going up, and now the Liberals are trying to claw their way back. Some polls are showing that with younger voters, especially this message around the budget and fairness for every generation is sinking in. So the Conservatives who have oodles and oodles of money are using their filled bank account to try and make sure that Trudeau doesn't climb back up from 23, 24% down in the doldrums, that he stays down there. They're going to be uh, putting this ad on broadcast and digital as well. It's not going to be one of these ones that just shared on YouTube and on social media. This is going to have significant money behind it, which makes it interesting. Conservatives could do this for the next year before the rip period starts, before the spending rules kick in. If that happens, what does that do to Trudeau and the Liberals? There could be serious damage. The Conservatives did this before with Stefan Dion in 2007, 2008, and into that campaign. They did the same with Michael Ignatieff in the lead up to the 2011. They haven't been effective in tackling Justin Trudeau. This ad shows things might be about to change. Let me know what you think. Drop yeah, I mean, and the, you know, that it's a, it's a very good ad because it, it's quick. <clears throat> it's you know, it's got good visuals. Well, the content obviously isn't good, but I mean, like, the way they displayed it, the way they went after him, and just, it's time for real change over and over again. And then you see, like, hey, here's Hamilton, or here's Abbotsford, looks pretty good, and then here it is now, and there's all this homelessness everywhere. And, you know, like Brian Lilly said, it's like, well, you know, it's not really a federal issue if a city has homelessness. Well, it is when you don't act correctly and you start taxing people into poverty. Well, housing, that's not a federal issue. Well... Justin Trudeau would agree with that until recently. We said, OK, fine. Now it's a problem. We're going to build five million or four million houses in five and a half years, which they're not going to. But now that he's realized that he is getting killed in the polls, now he's getting involved in housing. Should have done it a long time ago. OK, if, if, there, if there's an issue like, well, there, there's this city and we have homelessness, we don't have enough houses. It's up to that municipality to figure it out. Right. But when you're the prime minister and you're residing over the whole country and you see cities in the West, cities in you know the middle of Canada, cities in Ontario, cities in Atlantic Canada, and they all have homeless encampments, you have to now get involved. And he waited nine years to do it. And even then, is he really going to build as many houses as he said? Probably not. 
right? So his whole thing and liberals whole thing, well, this isn't a federal issue. It's not a federal issue. You need to get involved federally when you see major cities collapsing. Or else people are going to look at you because you're on the top. Being a, a, you know, a prime minister or a president, it's a lot like being the quarterback of a football team, right? A lot of the time when you win the championship as a quarterback, you're going to get too much credit. But when you lose, you're going to get too much of the blame. Similar in politics, where if something is going well, even if you didn't really have as much to do with it as people think, you're going to get credit for it. If there's mass homelessness and you're losing, you're going to get too much of the blame. That being said, that's the way it is. You're at the top. You can do something to fix this. You can work with the cities to you know, build houses and make sure that you can build them as quickly as possible and you know, serve the needs of the people and build starter homes, not mansions or luxury condos. You got to get involved that way. But he's not, or he didn't at least, and now he's pretending he's going to do it, and oh, I'll, I'll fix all these mistakes. He's, he's not even admitting he made mistakes. He never does. He, he never admits any of these scandals or his fault or the fact that he invoked the Emergency Act. Oh, no, this was a dangerous protest. You see what's happening in Toronto right now? Are those dangerous protests? No? You're not going to invoke the Emergency Act again, even though people are literally screaming things that are inciting uh, inciting violence. Remember, liberals were so upset about a few years ago on a certain day in January, remember? Inciting violence, inciting violence. These people are out there like, literally screaming, you know, up, long live October 7th. What do you think that means? And I'm not picking a side here. I don't know a whole, a whole lot about the history of this issue. All I know is there's people screaming, wanting death on the streets, and that's crazy, and they're not getting in trouble for it. And the liberals don't care because that's the team they're on, generally speaking. Right, like it seems like the the conservatives are more standing with Israel and the liberals are more standing with Gaza. Not all, but that's generally what you're seeing. These are left wing protests, and nothing's happening. Maybe it's because he got in trouble by the, from the federal court for invoking the Emergency Act the last time he did it. But either way, you know this whole that whole invoking the Emergency Act, you know that's something that we're gonna have to talk about later. Because Justin Trudeau is appealing it, and it's going to go to the Feder- uh, Supreme Court, rather. I don't know when, but that will be very interesting, and I'll definitely be covering that at that time. You know, But going back to you know the homelessness issue, it, it, you can see that it's steadily getting worse. And then it ramped up. You can see like it ramped up a lot with COVID because a lot of people were just leaving homeless shelters because they were you know, you're kind of cramped up in those places. So there was a lot of homelessness. But then after that, like there, there was a lot of homelessness, even though that you had people who were, you know, getting served and whatnot. Yeah, they were getting money, but a lot of them were, you know, sixteen hundred bucks a month and rents twelve hundred. So in the summertime, they just said, "Well, screw this, I'll just camp for the whole time." But even then, in the winter, you still saw like homeless tents here in Hamilton, right near the um, the first Ontario Center, whatever, whatever it's called. They keep renaming it, but there was like a homeless encampment right there the whole time during COVID. And then it left, moved over down to, I think, Fergus Street it was. The whole street was like filled up with tents. And then it's progressively getting worse. Now, every single park in this city, I think except maybe Gage Park, has tents in it. You'd be very hard-pressed to go by any park in this city and find one without tents in it. It's crazy. And yes... Is this all Justin Trudeau's fault? No, it's the municipalities as well. And some of those are conservatives, to be fair. But when you're at the top and you don't fix these issues, you're going to get all the blame. And he knows this and he didn't do anything about it. That being said, I'm going to end this video right here. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. Do you like the ad that Pierre Polyev and his team came out with? Do you not like it? Do you feel indifferent about it? Definitely let me know. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button. It really helps grow this channel. And I'll be back shortly with another video.